In this video I want to explore a stage direction which is very pivotal to understanding the first act of The Crucible and especially to understanding the character of Abigail Williams. Early on in the play she enters and it says she's 17, she's a strikingly beautiful girl, an orphan with an endless capacity for dissembling. Now the word dissembling means that she is always changing. You never quite get to know who this character, Abigail Williams, actually is. Um, one point she can be quite innocent, at the next point she can be very um, mean and be threatening other people, at another point she's flirting with John Proctor. So I'm going to show you some clips from the film version in which Winona Ryder plays Abigail Williams and um, you will start to understand the, um, the, the way that this is portrayed. So let's watch the first clip and just um, talk a little bit about how she portrays herself when she's with Reverend Paris. Uncle, perhaps you ought to go down and tell the people. What shall I tell them? That my daughter and my niece are discovered dancing like heathen in the forest. We did dance. And let me be whipped if I must be, but they are talking of witchcraft. That he's not witched. Were you conjuring spirits in the forest? I want the truth now. We never conjure spirits. Now hear me, child. You must know that there is a faction in this church sworn to drive me from my pulpit. I know that, sir. And they will destroy me now if my own house turns out to be the center of some obscene practice. Now I saw someone naked running through the trees. No one was. Don't so lie to me, I saw it! Holy sport! You call this sport? You cannot wake! Give me a bright answer now. Your name in the town is entirely white, is it not? There'll be no plush about my name, sir. Why did Goody Proctor discharge you from her service? Because I refused to be her slave. And I have heard said that John Proctor, John Proctor and you. My name is good in the village. Elizabeth Proctor's an envious, gossiping liar! Paris, I'm asking for you. You must come down, sir. You will have noticed in the clip that you just saw that she's very innocent in the opening um, scenes of the film there when she's with Reverend Paris. She lowers her head a lot. She, um, she, you know, kind of looks up very innocently, almost with puppy dog eyes and what have you. Um, until Elizabeth Proctor is mentioned, which is very interesting. She becomes very hostile and, um, and very nasty when Elizabeth is mentioned. And, um, and we see another side of her. Now just think about for a moment why she would want to act like that in front of Reverend Paris. Well, she's about to get into trouble for um, practicing witchcraft in the forest. If she is found practicing witchcraft, there's a punishment for that. And um, it shows some of her strength of character when she says, um, tell them we danced and I'll be whipped if I must. Um, for a girl to say, you know, I will actually t just take the punishment um, would have been seen as, as quite, you know, a strong character in that society. I'm going to show you a clip now of when she um, is when of when she's alone with the girls and, ha and and watch how her character changes from when she's with Reverend Paris at the beginning. She's all, as the stage directions say in in the play, she's all worry and apprehension and propriety. But when she's with the um, when she's with the girls alone, watch how she changes. What do we do? The whole country's talking witchcraft. She means to tell. We've got to tell her. They'll be calling us witches. Witchery the hanging era, like they done in Boston two years ago. You'll only be whipped for trying to conjure the boys and the dancing. Now listen to me, Betty dear. I've talked to your papa, and I've told him everything. So there's nothing to be feared anymore. I want my mama. Your mama's dead and buried. I'll find her. Let me find her. No, no, Betty, come here. Why are you doing this? I've told him. He knows now. You drink blood, Abby. You didn't tell him that. You'd never say that again. You drink a charm to kill John Proctor's wife. 
to mark this. Let anyone read a word or the edge of a word about the other things. And I will come to you in the black of some terrible night and I will bring with me a pointy reckoning that will shudder you. And you know I can do it. I saw Indian smash my dear parents' head on the pillow next to mine and I have seen some reddish work done at night. So did you see how she changed in that clip? When she was with the girl, she was extremely threatening. Um, she even said, I saw Red Indian smash my dear parents' head on the pillow next to mine, and I've seen some reddish work done at night, and I can make you wish you've never seen, um, you've never seen the sun go down. She was threatening to kill them. She says, I will bring with me a pointy reckoning. What she means by that is she will bring something to stab them with. This is a very different girl to the one who we saw only moments earlier when she was talking to her uncle, um, the Reverend Paris, and she had her head down, she was very innocent. In this one, she was very aggressive towards all of the other girls. So we start to see that when the witchcraft trials start to take on um, the kind of mass hysteria that they did, she is at the front of it. The question is, are these girls really witched or are they following what Abigail Williams does because they are so scared of her? Mary Warren is certainly very scared, uh, scared of her. You can see that in the way that she reacts to Abigail when, when she comes up and, and Abigail kind of threatens them all. So are they following Abigail Williams or are they really witched? I think the answer is probably pretty obvious and you see later on in the play how um, Abby kind of manipulates the situation. I'm going to show you another clip now. This is a clip where she's with John Proctor and we see yet another Abigail Williams. Oh, John, give me a soft word. No, Abby, that's done with. I'm waiting for you every night. Come on. I never gave you hope to wait for me. I have something better than hope, I think. Child. Wipe it out of mind, you must. I'll not be coming for you more. You'll surely spawn with me. You know me better. I know how you sweated like a stallion whenever I come near you. I saw your face when she put me out. You loved me then, and you do now. What was she like in that clip there? When she was with John Proctor, she was very flirty. She almost went into kind of like a, a girlish kind of um, state where she went to jelly because, you know, she fancies him so much. Um, this is a very different Abigail. We've seen three different types of girl already in it, just in the first sort of opening pages of the play, in the first opening moments of the film. She's very flirtatious with him, she wants to get back together with him, and when he doesn't, she brings out that nasty streak again. She, um, she, she starts to um, say nasty things about, about his wife, which um, she hopes will kind of provoke him a little bit, and he does bite by saying he'll speak nothing of Elizabeth. Um, and, you know, so, so um, we're getting a, an image of this girl that we can't really trust because there's so many different sides to her. And we'll see that as it goes along during the film.